<laughs> Welcome to my show, which I've titled The Big Reflection, which uh, started off with the idea of it being an art retrospective, um, and it has turned into being more of an installation piece of work that uh, talks about my life journey, and the artwork actually just seems to uh, illustrate. Mm -hmm. The story begins long before I was born, and this is, you know, just a lot of recent revelations. Um, thanks to my mother's cousins, I know my grandmother's great-grandfather immigrated from Germany around 1900. My grandfather's ancestor from Germany was sent as an orphan on a ship to New York City where he was told he would apprentice in a trade. He more or less became a slave and turned for his room and board at the business of the family who took him in. My grandmother's mother must have been a lively woman. It's told to me that she often held dances in the barn in her backyard with live music. Uh, and my grandmother, my Nana Lichtenberger, Eleanor, uh, as I called her, Nana Lichtenberger, was not at all outgoing. She never learned to drive, only wore house dresses even to my uncle's weddings, only made roast chicken for dinner, and my mom was her best friend. She was very, she just stayed in the house. So I just find it interesting that her mother seemed to be very lively and involved and vivacious and had people over to dance, and my own grandmother wouldn't think of it. <laughs> and Eleanor Schultz married Frederick Lichtenberger in about 1935. They had four children. My mother was the second born of them. She had one older brother and two younger brothers. They lived in a modest three-bedroom home on Catherine Street, just a block away from Eleanor's mother. Uh, and my grandfather, I called him granddaddy, worked for the railroad doing some kind of bookkeeping. At one point, he was offered a job for higher wages in Ohio. and. Um, tried to convince my grandmother to move the family up there, and she refused. Flat out refused, no way. Um, because she didn't want to leave her mother's house, which was around the corner in walking distance. My grandfather did accept the job in Ohio, and he basically moved there, taking the train back to Teaneck, New Jersey, most every weekend. So there was stuff going on in my mother's family, and for some reason my Nana Lichtenberger did not come to my mother's wedding when she married my dad. I, I actually don't know why. Um, I remember her as a frumpy, prissy old lady <laughs> with little metal clips to hold her curls around her face in place. She always wore the house dresses and a little sweater and clean white heads that she would cut holes in the big toes so her big toes could stick out. That's what she preferred. <laughs> Tell me about this picture here. <clears throat> this picture here. Well, this was, amazingly enough, is the original print that hung in my room when I was a young child. Like three, four, five. And I was surprised when I went back to my parents' house this past Easter to collect a lot of the old artwork that this was among it. Um, my mom said, oh, I love that. It's so cute. And I was like, ah, I hated it. It's titled Disgrace. And I just feel like um, that was the flavor of my upbringing was, uh, you know, disgrace and punishment and... I still have some pretty big concerns about, am I doing it right? And I'm not doing it good enough. My dad was a machinist. He was a perfectionist. And uh, uh, there, it was just very difficult to live up to his standards. And actually, I, I, I don't think I ever did. And I don't think that if I, you know, there just was not that <sighs> approval or accepting me just as I was as a person. But I was already drawing a lot. So at one point, uh, the teacher says, OK, everybody draw a picture of your family. And, and this is actually a drawing my daughter made of my fa our family. There, there I am. I don't know what those are, but I can only imagine. <laughs> and Azalea and Joelle and our cat Rizzo. 
So anyway, we had to draw something. I said, oh, cool, I can do this. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable now. And I whipped out the drawing of my parents and my brother and I in no time. And everybody else was still sitting at their table, you know, tongue out of their mouth. And they're drawing away. And I'm sitting there. And I didn't really know what to do with myself. So I, I was like, well, I'll just add my best friend Beth into the picture. And I still, they were still working. So I said, well, I'll put her sister in, too. Um, and her beagle, why not? And, and, and finally, it was time to finish the drawings. And what we didn't realize is that for back to school night, the teacher had put all these drawings on the wall. And when the parents came into the room that night, they were asked to pick out their child's family drawing. And my parents were uh, rather humiliated and offended that they were the last ones up there trying to find their daughter's drawing and going, we don't see Leanne's drawing. Well, well, this is it here, the teacher says. And, and they're like, we don't have four kids and a dog. And um, I got reprimanded for that. You know, it was dishonest. It was not truthful. Uh, I got reprimanded for that. Um, so this is in Vermont. This is the, my backyard. Uh, Arthur, this was a notable piece. So I actually started going to my teacher's teachers studio. Um, my teacher's teacher was Arthur Maynard. And he did a lot of seascapes in Hudson River School style painting. And I would do figure drawing there. And one night, the model didn't show up. So this teacher, Arthur, um, posed for us. And this is a painting I did of him in that old style, which still belongs to my dad. And he wants it back after the show. He loves it. They love my old work. But um, he looked at this painting, the teacher, this old teacher, and said, oh, we got a hot tomato here. <laughs> and I was so excited at his special attention that I went out and got into my, you know, I was driving home in my mom's 500, 1975 Ford Galaxy, and I bashed into somebody's car in the parking lot. <laughs> I uh, moved, I found a place, a room to rent for 30 bucks a week with this woman, Mickey, um, who took me in and just really kind of was a mom to me. She, uh, here I am, 19, I come in and she sits me down, she goes, okay, there'll be no pregnancies there, the condoms are in that drawer. <laughs> Nobody ever talked to me. <laughs> that before everything was so hush hush. I was like, okay. And she ended up getting me a kitten to keep me preoccupied, <laughs> which was really wise. Um, so here's a crepe of Raoul. I just absolutely loved Raoul. Raoul wants to know what all the splashing is about. I did when I got to Taos and lived with my hippie friend up in by Escondido in this little log cabin that had no electricity or no running water. And, um, it was like a hippie hangout, and um, this is one of the passers-by, Mad Dog, he's one of those guys working the sign, um, you know, in Taos, and he would make money and buy food and bring it back for us, so, and I was just so thrilled to go from this to that. <laughs> and I've worked in plenty of frame shops, so I was like, well, how can I frame this? And I went out and cut all these willows, and I was so overjoyed to be here. It was such freedom for me. Such freedom. Um, but again, I got involved in a relationship that didn't work and that was devastating. So this, this piece I drew of me and Azalea, it's you and me against the world, kid. Um, I, I find that I, drew, I draw self-portraits when I'm in difficult time. I, I make self-portraits that are my own kind of cheerleaders. Uh, I don't do it intentionally that way, but I just noticed seeing that. I had to move back up to town from Pilar. I got myself my, a little apartment in Yano Queimado, and it was the first time in months that I was, had some time to paint. The kids were in school and preschool, and I got in my little apartment, and the heat hadn't been on. I was painting this with my mittens on, because there was a gas heater, but you needed a really long lighter to light uh, light it and I didn't I didn't have anything I hadn't even moved into this place yet I just had a little space and a little time and a place and this is the painting I did which was that event of 
you know, again, it's a self-portrait. I'm trying to feel empowered. I have my own place. I'm going to heat it, goddammit, because it was in February, so I can do a piece of artwork. So much of my art is, being, is done out of rebelliousness and determination and screw you, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm trying to balance that. <laughs> But it has been my vehicle, for one thing, for learning how to be in the world, how to talk to people. Um, and it's been my coach. When things get hard, I paint. That's just the way it is. And it's almost like how I, how I paint. It's like I don't even paint that much until I create a deadline for a show. That'll get me painted. <laughs> so that's what I do. So I really painted hard, 2003, 2004, 2005, um, I just, I, I, I was like, I didn't know what to do. And then 2008 came along and that kind of helped me figure out what to do because <laughs> um, the economy fell and no paintings were selling anyway and um, I, didn't have, I didn't have to paint. Of course, I had two mortgages at that time and I was, I, you know, I, I was, I totally crashed. It was a total crash. My, my one daughter went to Brazil for the Rotary Club. She was an international student, but she was gone. She wasn't there. My other daughter was out on her own and actually um, pregnant at 19. Um, I had to move out of my house in town to rent it out to be able to pay the mortgage. I wanted to move up to Yano in my house, but I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't, I couldn't go up there. I couldn't go up there and make a life because I was, cr I was crying <laughs> all the time. It was very difficult. Um, well, I did a good thing. I, I, I got sober. I quit smoking all the pot that I've always been smoking. I had to do something. I had to do something, and that was the time to do it. So that's been five years when I quit smoking, and um, i am just been kind of rebuilding my life since then because um, it was hard. It was... Uh, I always smoked when I painted, and I was afraid to go outside and, and, and try to paint and find out that I couldn't paint without smoking pot. So January 1st, 2013, I got rid of every tube of oil paint in the house and got a set of acrylics and just started doing uh, still lifes and trying to learn the damn things. And of course it turned out to be a blessing because I love them and they're great and they're fun and they work fine and they're not so toxic. <laughs> Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and other than that, I, I, I feel like I'm finally integrating my whole life. I'm a painter, I'm an artist, there's no arguing that. What can I best what is my job? What, is, what, do I, what do I want to paint? What do I want to give people in my paintings? Because painting can feel so selfish. But I have noticed that people tell me they get something from my paintings, um, which is fabulous. So I'm, and you know what? There's no way I can, in my mind, make up a plan and say, okay, this is what people get from my paintings, so I'm going to paint paintings that give them you know, it's, I have to have that connection with the, the creator, the divine spirit. I say, here I am. I offer myself. Please guide me um, with each breath to let me know what it is I'm supposed to do next. And uh, I can't predict what that is. And I just have to be willing. And, and it's a beautiful place to be. Because really, for most of my life, it's been... Um, about pursuing and trying to get something. And at this point, I'm finally like, okay, this is, this is here I am. What, will you do, what, what do you want to do with me? <laughs> the end. <laughs>